Today, I'm going to talk about The Procurus by Johannes Vermeer. This figure is believed to be a self-portrait of him. This is the earliest uh, painting that Vermeer dated, which is 1656, which happened to be four years after an explosion of Delft's uh, gunpowder stores exploded the city center. So, this painting could be seen as, you know, a celebration of being alive. Because if you survived an explosion, you would agree. Yay, we survived! Let's take life to the full! And for those of you who don't know, Delft is in the Netherlands. You know, the place where people speak Dutch and wear wood clog shoes. I've never been there, but it looks really beautiful. In case you didn't know, a procurus, or if it's a guy, procurer, is a person who obtains a woman as a prostitute for another person. So this figure is likely the procurus. And you can see by the greedy look in her eyes that she's expecting payment. To be honest, when I first saw this painting, I thought she was a dude. Then, as I looked at more, I thought she was just an androgynous figure. But now, as I researched this painting, I've come to the conclusion that this is definitely a woman. Anyway, um, Vermeer's father was an innkeeper in Delft. You know, said for that, you know, he that Vermeer lived in Delft, no. and um, anyway, Vermeer's father, aside from being an innkeeper, was also an art dealer. No, well, his art dealing was you know, sort of a side business, and um, it's believed that this is where Vermeer got his art training. At least, for by I believe that his you know, art dealer. Anyway. Um, according to art historian Andrew Graham Dixon on you know, the madness of Vermeer, Secret Lives of the Artists, which is a documentary that you can find on YouTube, this painting was made to depict the rambunctious world of tavern and brothel, the world he's grown up in. But it's a subject he's never returned to. That's not my impersonation of um, Graham Dixon. That is just my um, British accent, which I acquired thanks to my love of British programming. Which, since I'm American, I can only watch on YouTube. So, anyway, this painting currently resides in this museum in Dresden which I'm not going to try and pronounce, but the name is on the screen. So for you blind people out there, I am sorry. I don't want to embarrass myself any more than I probably already am. So, like all of Vermeer's work, there's a mystery to this one. Um, typical Dutch paintings at the time show a narrative, like uh, Dutch folk tales, and great fables and parables and stuff for, you know, religious messages. But Vermeer, for some reason, removes the narrative. And because of this, we don't really know what's going on. Like, get a of it. Like, in a woman reading a letter, we know a woman is reading a letter. But what's in the letter? Sad news or bad news? And this painting. Oh. Well, we know that you know, a man is getting a prostitute from a procurist. But what about the 
premier figure. You know, why is he there? You know, who are these people? Like, what are their names? Who are they really? You know, who are these men? This woman is, you know, as I said before, the Procurist. But that's all we know about her. You know, is she a nun? Or just some lady? Or, you know, is she the prostitute's mother? Or some other relative? Or is she just the Procurist and that woman's just her prostitute? You know, we have no idea. Is she related to any of the other two men? We don't know. We know that this man is probably a client of the Procurus, and it's either about to sleep with or has just slept with this woman, who is you know, probably a prostitute, who has been procured for the man in red by the Procurus. And she's also having her breast squeezed or touched by him. Uh, but also if you look at the shady, it looks more like squeezy to me. But that's what you should expect if you're a prostitute. Having your genitals and other private parts being touched by random men who give you money. Anyway, but there's still the question of, has the woman been a prostitute for a long time? And therefore, used to be in touch like this? Or, even if she's not, is the man a frequent customer of her? And she's just, you know, used to him? We don't know. There's nothing in the painting to suggest that. There's also the question of, what's he doing here? Was this man the last customer? Is he just overseeing the transaction to back up any claims by the Procurus? Is this man really Vermeer? Or if not, who is he? And is Vermeer, is this scene taking place inside his father's inn? So Vermeer just happens to be there? Or is this man just another man planning on sharing the woman with the man in red. Which sounds pretty... Um, not what you expect. And also, it's important to note that by the time this painting was finished, Vermeer was married and had converted to Catholicism. So, if he is planning on sharing the woman, then that would just be completely wrong. You know, and considered adultery. So, yeah, there's a lot of questions about this figure here. Um, none of which I can give my definite answer to, because no one seems to know. Well, there are plenty of theories, but none of them can be proven since you know, none of Vermeer's letters or really no letters of his family survive so basically the only records we have of Vermeer and his family are court uh, records court documents which paints Vermeer's uh, family in a very bad light and his mother-in-law, a very sad woman, because Vermeer's father-in-law and brother-in-law were basically jerks who were abusive and you know, spent time in jail. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, Let's talk about Vermeer's technique and mastery of light. Vermeer is known as the master of light. 
and when looking at paintings, you can see why. I mean, look at this blanket. It looks like a real blanket. But just happens to be painted. And the lighting is very accurate. In fact, I heard it said that there's almost no trace of drawing in Vermeer's work. Everything is done by light impression, making his paintings look like they're made of light. If you're curious, um, I heard that on the documentary I mentioned earlier, which you can just find on YouTube. After you watch this video, just type in the search bar, The Madness of Vermeer, and you'll come across a four-part documentary. Unless he just took it down. Eh, I hope they did. It's a really good documentary. And if you look at this Vermeer, which is one man writing a letter with her maid, you can just see how photorealistic the light is. If you look at any Vermeer, you'll see this. Seriously, just Google Vermeer. And you'll just come across all these beautiful paintings with photorealistic light. A quick side note here, as I said before, there is no narrative in Vermeer's works. And this one, um, we well, you know there's a woman and her maid, but we don't know, you know who the woman is, or what in the letter she's writing, or who she's, she's writing it to, or, you know, what the maid's doing, and she's just sort of standing there. Now back to this! We've already talked about the function and the content of this painting, and I think the light is already understood. If not, then please feel free to comment it down below. But please be nice about it. Anyway, let's talk about this. This is an x-ray that was taken of the painting, you know, the Procurus. And you can see that the man in red wasn't originally wearing a hat. And he was originally focused on the woman no, rather than the coin that she is in the final painting. Why this change was made, we have no idea. Because, again, we know very little about Vermeer's personal life. Vermeer is famous for his genre paintings, which were popular at the time. Um, for those of you who don't know, a genre painting is a painting that depicts scenes from ordinary life, like pouring a bowl of milk, or a woman writing a letter, you know, stuff like that, you know, and genre paintings um, usually depict domestic situations, like the ones I previously mentioned. And if you know anything about Vermeer, you know that most of his paintings are genre paintings. Although he did make portraits, like this one, which is probably his most famous uh, portrait, you know, girl with a pearl earring. Although it's probably only famous because you know, this painting inspired a book which was then turned into a movie starring Scott Johansson. So, remember earlier in the course, well, my Art History 2 course, those of you who are not um, in my course, um, will recall the, the professor saying that the Mona Lisa is just a painting that's famous for being famous. And I guess in a way this painting could also qualify because it's 
kind of like Mona Lisa. It's like famous because they wrote a book about it, and and that book turned to a movie. All the Mona Lisa. It's like famous because it got stolen and then was returned. So yeah. So that's all I have to say about this painting. If there's anything I missed, please be sure to politely tell me in the comments down below. And Professor Malush or Maloche, I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name, sadly. Um I hope that this was at least be worthy. And also, I'm sorry about the poor audio quality. I don't have a real mic. I feel like those fancy mics people use to record stuff. I just, I'm just using my um, computer mic. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, Thanks for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Because no matter what, things could always be worse.